Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Hey everyone, welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I'm your host, Acacia Courtney. It's the second to last day of the meet here at Gulfstream Park. 11 races on the card. Let's get right to the track and weather conditions. The track is fast and the turf is firm with temperatures in the high 80s today. The opener is five furlongs on the turf and made in claiming in the purse is $30,000 for the two-year-old fillies. Racing at Gulfstream. Good start out wide for Splendid Love, who's heading off for the early lead. Can do Kate has speed from the far outside. La Zaria, just a little bit stormy, comes away in the top flight, and Star Gala's moving at the rail. Then it's a length and a half back to Pretty Wild Posey, who's three lengths clear of the team of Draft and Ola Princess, and the trailer is Palango. Into the far turn they go. Big long shot, La Zaria leads it by length. Can do Kate comes to call from second. Star Gala's pocketed up with no place to work from third. Then to the outside, and Splendid Love tacking on in between horses just a little bit stormy followed by pretty wild posy two better than draft as they run to the top of the stretch lazariah the first to turn for home can do kate moving up from second working into the clearest star gala floating out splendid love and they turn for home at 60 to one lazariah still there by three candid kate is second star gala is third then printed wild posy time is ticking away and it's 60 to one here's lazariah lazariah star gala too late lazariah bombs away Second is Star Gala, third is Can Do Kate, and fourth is Splendid Love, followed by Pretty Wild Posey in 57 flat. Number eight, La Zoraya, starts the day with a bang as a 60 to one upset. Eddie Dominguez in the saddle, trained by Javier Negrete and owned by Carlos Munoz, paid $134 to win. Race number two takes us to the main track. It's a claiming race and the purse is $15,000. Seven furlongs, four fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races or three-year-olds. Scratch the three, twist and bake, and the six, sweet Irish rose. And they're up. From the center, Baby I'm Worth It is chirped along to get the early lead from the rail. That's Feeling Awesome, who will keep her company in the early stages. Away third is Sad Right Cat. Followed by Rachel's Girl, and down at the inside, Infiltrata tips into the two path to move forward as they run down the back stretch. They're all chasing the heavy hitting favorite, Baby I'm Worth It, in front by almost two. Say it Right Cat adjoins second alongside Feeling Awesome. Then back fourth is Infiltrata, and trailing is Rachel's Girl. The opening quarter was just 23 and one as they go to the half mile pole. Baby, I'm worth it with a hassle-free early tempo. Leads it by a length and three quarters. Now widens to two with less than half a mile to go. Make it two and a half. Baby, I'm worth it getting away a bit here. From the inside, that's failing awesome. A joint second alongside Say It Right Cat, then Infiltrata and Rachel's Girl. There's less than three furlongs to negotiate, and the leader is Baby I'm Worth It. She's two and a half in front. Feeling awesome, working harder to hold second from Say It Right Cat, who's a retreating third. Infiltrate rallies toward her inside, and back last is Rachel Girl. Top of the lane, 46 and one opening half mile. Sitting chilly up top is the favorite Baby I'm Worth It, who maintains a three-length lead. Feeling awesome, not going away. She's still second. Infiltrate third, then Say It Right Cat. Through the final furlong, Baby I'm Worth It, and Edgar Zayas make this look like easy money. Baby, I'm worth it. Widens in the late stages under a hand ride to win it by four lengths. Second, feeling I'm awesome. Third is Infiltrata. Fourth, say it right, Cat in 124 and two. Number four, Baby, I'm worth it delivers as the big favorite. Ridden to victory by Edgar Zayas. Trained by Ralph Zadie and owned by Averill Racing. It's time for a break. We'll be back after these words. Race number three is five furlongs on the turf, a claiming race of the purse of $18,000 for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. There are no scratches or jockey changes to report. And they're off. Good start out wide.
for Belladini and Key Agent. They begin the best with skirts on fire away racing in third while trying to keep her spot. Love Flute is out of there in fourth from fifth and out three wide as Wildwood Cotton. Then at the back of the pack include Giselle Mabel in a moment's notice and the favorite Don't Tell Vanessa will have to pass them all as they speed into the far turn. Key Agent in the two path, Belladini along the rail. They're in lockstep, a length and a half clear of skirts on fire who's waiting in the wings while third. From fourth, that's Love Flute tacking on fifth in a moment's notice then Don't Tell Vanessa. She's still better than six and a half lengths off the lead while trying to rally. Second last now is Wildwood Cotton and trailing is Giselle Mabel. Top of the lane, Belladini cuts the corner and opens up. Back to second is Key Agent down the center, Love Flute. Don't tell Vanessa did not go on, but Belladini did and she's long gone. Belladini and jockey Tyler Gaffleone, who has not moved an inch. He shakes her up once, now wraps her up and wins by five or six. Going to be Don't Tell Vanessa on track for second from Love Flute third. Got close for fourth, either Key Agent to recharging in a moment's notice in 55 and 4. Number 6, Belladini wins the third race, ridden by Tyler Gaffleone, trained by Milton Wolfson and owned by Vicino Racing Stables. Race 4, 6 furlongs on the main track, a starter optional claiming in the purse is $30,000 for 2-year-olds. There's a late scratch of the 3, Forest Waltz, as well as the 4, Over Limit. And they're off. Out wide, Dazzling Dixie begins the best from the rail. Here's USA Jewel moving to challenge. Thanks God comes away racing in third. From the rail, the heavy favorite, my friend, is second last, but three lengths behind, and trailing the field is proud of my honey. Down the back stretch they go. Loose up top, USA Jewel and jockey Manny Aguilar by almost two now. Dazzling Dixie, the nearest pursuer, second, my friend, is racing in third while looking to get to the outside through a 22 and two opening quarter. From fourth, it's thanks God and proud of my honey is the trailer as they round the far turn. With the lead, USA Jewel by length and a quarter, Dazzling Dixie is second. Then it's the team of thanks God and the favorite, my friend, racing third and fourth. My friend got hemmed in there by thanks God, so we'll have to wait for racing room, trailing the field here is proud of my honey. To the top of the stretch they run. Dazzling Dixie leads and gets first run on the heavy favorite who still has no place to go. Thanks God is up into second. Now Luzzy tipped to the outside with my friend. Three sixteenths to go. My friend wanting to shift to the inside. So meanwhile, thanks God is up to put ahead in front. Back to second. Dazzling Dixie. My friend alters inside. Still time for him. And here he comes. He's just much the best. My friend powers to the lead. My friend will win it. Thanks God game and defeat while second in front of Dazzling Dixie. Third. Proud of my honey fourth in front of USA Jewel and 111 and four. Number two, my friend wins the fourth race at odds of one to nine. Lane Luzzy in the saddle, trained by Larry Pilati and owned by Deborah Posky. Race number five is a mile on the turf, a claiming race in the purse is $16,000 for Phillies and mares, three year olds and up, which have never won two races. The six, Earhart, will be ridden by Tyler Gaffleone. And they're off. Awkward getaway for Be Sure Lisa. She hopped at the start. Patient Digna was away well. Rock hard lady from the rail is showing speed. Up on the outside, Magic 2, and farther out is crushing victory. From behind the speed, race Be Sure Lisa and Saratoga Ransom. Hard to picture is three wide, and the early trailer is Earhart. Around the first turn, chasing long shot leader Rock Hard Lady, who leads three parts of a length. Patient Digna is there second. Be Sure Lisa's on hold, pocketed up third. From fourth, it's Magic 2, then the gray Saratoga Ransom. A bit wide through the initial stages is crushing victory. She's third last. Second Second last is Rock Hard Lady, and at the back of the pack, the trailer is Earhart. To the back stretch they go. The on top, Rock Hard Lady and Semi Camacho through a 25 and 1 opening quarter. They lead the way by a length. From second, it's Patient Digna. From third, Be Sure Lisa. Widest crushing victory. Magic two between horses, then Saratoga Ransom. Earhart is at the back of the pack alongside Hard to Picture and the run to the half mile pole. No change in the plot. The leader is still Rock Hard Lady, and the lead is still three parts of a length through a 49 and 4 half mile. Patient Digna given a little bit more rain to work with from second. Rispoli riding the rail with Be Sure Lisa. She's into contention only a length behind while needing to secure racing room. Three wide out there is Magic 2. Then comes Saratoga Ransom. Gaffleone also warming to the task with Earhart. She'll have no, no place to go. Crushing victory and Saratoga Ransom are next as they run to the top of the stretch. Rispoli tried to get through on uh, the inside running Be Sure Lisa, but 
didn't make it. Meanwhile, Patient Digna keeps coming at Rock Hard Lady off the turn. Rock Hard Lady on the inside, Patient Digna on the outside. Be sure Lisa put into the clear to try to re-rally from third. Inside the final furlong, the leader is still Patient Digna. Be sure Lisa with the late push on the outside. Be sure Lisa at Riot, the leader Patient Digna and Patient Digna will win it. Be sure Lisa ran out of racetrack second from Rock Hard Lady, then Air Hart and Saratoga Ransom in 137 and three. Number two, Patient Digna wins the fifth race. Luca Panici in the saddle, owned and trained by Steve Waskin. Race number six is six and a half furlongs on the main track, a maiden claiming, and the purse is $14,000. Four fillies and mares, three year olds and up. The two, Money Road, will be ridden by Pedro Monterey Jr. And they're off. Last in, first out, Spring Me gets the first call, but here's the first timer hailing from down toward the inside, and hailing goes to put ahead in front. Love again now moves to be second from Manana, who races in third. Spring Me is back to fourth. Along the inside goes Queen G and Money Road with You Can Do Magic on the outside. Down the back stretch they go, and Hailing leads the way three parts of a length. On the outside, it's Love again in second. These two have drawn three lengths better than Manana third. Then Spring Me from fourth, a length and a half in front of You Can Do Magic. Money Road is second last, and the early trailer is Queen G. They post a quarter in 22 and four, and they round the far turn. Hailing and Edgar Zayas lead only narrowly. Love again draws up alongside, and now Love again takes the lead. From third at Spring Me, Manana has horse. No place to prove it from fourth now. Five lengths in front of Money road then you can do magic as they run to the top of the stretch there's a quarter of a mile left to go and Danusuki sitting confidently on spring me on the outside and spring me runs right by love again to take the lead three lengths back to you can do magic manana and hailing with three sixteenths to go spring me set down for the drive and widens on a three length lead back to second is love again four lengths clear of manana then you can do magic in money road but in deep stretch it will be spring me and Danusuki winning it going away spring me by five Love again will hold second. You can do magic third. Fourth is Manana and fifth is Money Road in 119 and three. Number seven, Spring Me was much the best. Danusuki was in the saddle, owned and trained by James McMullen. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment. for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded in 1999 by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, now based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm, from the breeding shed to the racetrack, in pursuit of producing the best. Race number seven is seven and a half furlongs on the turf, a maiden claiming, and the purse is $27,000 for three-year-olds and up. Note that the number eight, Big Nicky, will be ridden by Matt Rispoli. And they're off. Dominic was off a step slow. Good start for Celestial's Drama, who's heading off for the early lead alongside Cape Dynasty in the early stages. These two work two lengths better than Extreme Justice and two steps forward. They're away third and fourth. In between horses goes Big Nicky with Hope Town riding the rail. He's situated about four and a half lengths off the lead. Out wide but progressing is recalibrating. Then Tropicat. Then on the outside racing second last is Big Nicky. And at the track, the back of the pack, the trailer is Combe Say Me. Into the back stretch they run. And on the outside, Cape Dynasty on the inside at Celestial Drama. Their heads apart for the top. Two lengths better than two steps forward. Then comes the inside running Extreme Justice. Moving up on the inside goes Big Nicky. Recalibrating is on his outside. Followed by Hope Town and Dominic. Dominic is four wide down the backstretch run. He's a half length in front of a progressing Tropicat and the trailer is Combe Say Me. 
They went through the opening quarter in 23 and one, and they swing into the far turn. Two steps forward, three wide and up, the challenge for the lead. Cape Dynasty has the lead, Celestial's Drama's back third. From fourth is Extreme Justice, then recalibrating from fifth now. Only two and a half lengths off the lead, then it's Hope Town. Dominic tries to rally. So too does Big Nicky and Tropicat as they run to the top of the stretch. Cape Dynasty maintains control. Two steps forward is second, recalibrating. Up and on the outside from third, ducking to the rail is Extreme Justice as they turn for home. On the far outside, Tropicat begins to finish with interest, but the gray Extreme Justice takes over. Extreme Justice by a length and a half. Cape Dynasty second, Tropicat then recalibrating in Hopetown to the finish. It's Extreme Justice and Alvarado Jr. to win it by three. Cape Dynasty second, Tropicat third, then recalibrating in Hopetown. Time for the race was 129 flat. Number two, Extreme Justice. Won the seventh race. Roberto Alvarado Jr. was the jockey. Dennis Manning, the trainer. Owned by Flea Market Racing. Race number eight today is five and a half furlongs on the main track. A maiden claiming in the purse is $21,000 for the two-year-olds. Scratch the six dudes scepter and the seven El Chapito. And they're off. Stumbling at the beginning was El Sensor. It was a quick start for Mechanics Finest, who's heading off for the early lead. Moving up on the outside goes Love Conquers. In between horses, Rosebud's High. Wide on the course, Vivid Image. After a tough start, El Sensor is in tight and having to check back. In between horses goes Rosebud's High. Then it's a length back to Always Dude. The favorite's on the move while in the clear. A length in front of Icono, and it's four to the trailer, Senor Borincano. They run around the far turn and up for the lead, Vivid Image. By an act, Love Conquers alongside second, Mechanics Finest is third. Running on while four wide from fourth is the favorite always dude. In between horses goes Rosebud's High. Then it's a stretch of another length and a half to Yokono, followed by El Sensor and Senor Borincano as they run for home. Off the turn, Vivid Image has the lead. Mechanics Finest back for more on the outside. Second, always dude in the center of the course. And here's Okono trying to find clear racetrack. Through the final furlong, Mechanics Finest is still in front. Okono now trying to get into the clear. He might have room now. Here comes Okono trying to get Mechanics Finest. Mechanics Finest. Mr. Okono, these two Mechanics Finest. Mechanics Finest is hanging on to win it for Okono, second and Vivid Image, and always dude in 106 and three. Number four, Mechanics Finest wins the eighth race, ridden to victory by Edgar Zayas, trained by Mark Hasley and owned by Move Horse Inc. Race number nine is one mile on the turf, a claiming race with a purse of $18,000 for Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up. Scratch the four, GP Ricky, and the five, a Fleet Mary. And they're up. From the inside, Pearls for Girls establishes control under the wire the first time from Fearless Princess, who races in second. Down at the rail, Zyar Destiny is now third, followed by Desert Bliss in fourth. Fifth is Rain It In, and Gigi's Miracle is sixth and last in the run to the first turn. Pearls for Girls with no pace pressure up front, leads it by a length and a half. Fearless Princess is second, Zyar Destiny is third. Desert Bliss is racing from fourth, four and a half lengths off the pace setter. Two clear of Rain It In, and Gigi's Miracle on her inside. Field separated by seven lengths in the run to the backstretch. Pearls for girls and Nick Juarez through the opening quarter in 24 flat. Fearless Princess is second. Sire Destiny is third. From fourth, that's Desert Bliss. No change in proceedings. Four lengths back to rein it in and three more to Gigi's Miracle. There's less than five furlongs to run in the race, and Pearls for Girls has been allowed to strut her stuff up top. She leads it by a length and a quarter. Zyar Destiny is second, looking for racing room. On the outside of her is Fearless Princess, two lengths back to Desert Bliss. Then it's all another two lengths back to rein it in, and Gigi's Miracle is last of all. Through the opening half mile and 48 seconds flat, around the far turn they go. Pearls for Girls, yet to be headed, leads it three parts of a length. Fearless Princess second. Zyar Destiny all dressed up with no place to go. Then Desert Bliss. Rain it in and Gigi's Miracle. They move to the top of the stretch and they'll have to get the leader, Pearls for Girls. She's been there since they sprung it. On the outside in Desert Bliss, from between them, Fearless Princess, up the rail and Zyar Destiny, followed by Rain it in. Three sixteenths to go and Pearls for Girls. Well rationed by Juarez up top and a length and a half in front. Fearless Princess, then Desert Bliss and Zyar Destiny, but they're coming to the wire. A mile on turf in gate to wire fashion for Pearls for Girls. Fearless Princess second, Desert Bliss third, and Zyar Destiny and Gigi's Miracle at 137 and 2. 
Number one, Pearls for Girls wins the ninth race in wire to wire fashion. Nick Wara is in the saddle, trained by Ralph Nix and owned by Whisper Hill Farm. It's time for a break. We'll be back after these words. Next January, 12 horses, a million dollar buy-in for a $12 million purse. It is the world's richest race. It is the Pegasus World Cup. Race number 10 is one mile on the main track and allowance optional claiming with a purse of $43,000 for three-year-olds and up. The three Moonlight Bandit will be ridden by Nick Juarez and the six Ender's Cat will be ridden by Pedro Monterey Jr. Please note that the main track is now listed as sloppy. And they're off. It was an even beginning. From the outside, Ender's Cat reaching out for the yearly lead, moving between horses Moonlight Bandit to show speed. Away in the top flight is V's Boy with Norman's Hero, and the two at the back are Conviction and the stretch runner Cheech Thunder. They exit the one-mile shoot now and link up with the main course. The leader is Moonlight Bandit and Nick Juarez by a length. From second, Norman's Hero. From third, Ender's Cat. Then at the inside is V's Boy. It's a stretch of three to his stablemate Conviction, and Cheech Thunder is the last horse. Through the opening quarter in 24 and 1, down the backstretch they continue. Moonlight Bandit setting his own fractions here, leads it a length and a quarter. Norman's Hero on a long reign from John Cruz racing in second. Then it's V's Boy, a joint third alongside Ender's Cat. Conviction is asked to quicken a bit while about six lengths off the lead. And the trailer is Cheech Thunder. 47 and 3 for the opening half mile. They sped it up in the second quarter and they round the far turn. Norman's Hero up to challenge the leader, Moonlight Bandit, at the 5 16th. From third and Ender's Cat, V's Boy scrubbed on fourth. Conviction trying to gain ground from fifth, and Cheech Thunder tries to kickstart a rally from behind. Meanwhile, Moonlight Bandit continues to lead. They move past the quarter pole after three quarters and 111 and 4, and Moonlight Bandit, the one to beat. Moonlight Bandit turns first on a two length lead. Norman's Hero is there second. Jesus Rios has Cheech Thunder in full stride. He's trying to make a late impact inside the final furlong. Moonlight Bandit's wandering. Norman's Hero is second, and Cheech Thunder comes alive up the inside. Norman's Hero just took the lead. Moonlight Bandit threw it away. Norman's Hero. Norman's Hero got the victory. It looks like Cheech Thunder is second. Got close for third between V's Boy and Moonlight Bandit in 137 and 4. Number four, Norman's Hero wins the 10th race, ridden by John Cruz, trained by Ramon Moya and owned by RAH Consultants. The 11th and final race today is five furlongs and it is off the turf, a maiden claiming with a purse of $30,000 for the two-year-olds. The seven Gruber will be ridden by Miguel Vasquez. And they're off. Excellent start for the favorite in some money who tries to get the early lead, but here's Gruber moving up the challenge from the inside. Epic Drama makes it three horses across the track. It's two lengths back to Katie's Choice, who's racing on from fourth. Then out wide goes Bishy into Kingfish. Stretch of three to Prosperity Mo with Sergeant JWR. And the trailer is Coronado again, farther back to Sully's Folly. They run around the far turn, and on top of the field, the leader now is Grubert by a length and a half. Off the fence in some money on the rebid second. Epic Drama is now third. Racing from fourth is to Kingfish in front of Katie's Choice, who's between horses in fifth. The rest need to get moving, led by the inside running sergeant, JWR, as they turn for home. Set down driving on the outside in some money, and Carlos Hernandez up for the money. They lead it past the eighth pole, but Grubert fights right back toward the inside. In some money, and Grubert in some money, a narrow lead. Grubert is second in some money. We'll win it. Grubert second. 
Back third is Epic Drama. Fourth is Sergeant Dade WR. And fifth was the Kingfish in 58 and four. Number four, In Some Money wins the finale. Carlos Hernandez in the saddle. That's two today for trainer Ralph Nix. This one owned by Russell Wood Farm and Ralph Nix. In the late pick five, five of five paid 974.85. Four of five paid $11. No winner in the super high five, so there's a carryover into Saturday of 1916.03. In the pick six, six of six paid $4,086.44. There's a carryover of $116,529.84. That wraps up today. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Don't forget special post time of 12 p.m. 13 races. It's the last installment of the Florida Sire Stakes. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Oh, well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack. I'm so tired.